welcome back in this class let us start looking at unsteady state flow we are going back to some rigorous analysis uh, and then in the last class we did non dimensional analysis which is not very mathematically rigorous and so on and so forth but was very uh, helpful useful uh, but we are going now to rigorous analysis which uh, is based on uh, good understanding of what is happening. Uh, Let us do this um, to get an idea of the unsteady state aspects which are very relevant for our situations, applications to biological systems. Many different places you have unsteady state flow or when you have unsteady state flow you must be able to uh, address that. <clears throat> And once we do this unsteady state flow and next is pulsatile flow and then we will get to aspects, no, we will still do, uh, we will still stick with uh, some reasonable level of rigor. Yeah, we will get to turbulent flow which uh, again we will start hand waving a bit and then we will get to, to macroscopic aspects. Okay. So, uh, as we have already seen whenever you have unsteady state then you have the time derivative coming along with it that additional derivative or the partial differential equation becomes mathematically rigorous uh, ma mathematically um, uh, time consuming or uh, tedious to address. Okay. But let us do that because there are some advantages in a numerical uh, in a analytical solution. I will just provide some uh, thoughts on a numerical solution also. Uh, if you are looking at numerical route, you need um, a, a lot of uh, grounding or you need to pick up a lot of information on the numerical aspects, so numerical analysis, numerical uh, simulations, aspects and so on and so forth, which probably you have not done as a part of an undergraduate course. Okay. So, you need that and not just that, even there, there are a lot of, it is not very straightforward. Uh, there are uh, challenges that are uh, very particular to the numerical methods themselves. It is not that you just use a numerical method, you will get the solution much simpler. There are very many challenges that you need to overcome there also. Okay. So, uh, these two approaches, they are essential to be able to solve and to use fundamental knowledge for better and better design analysis and operation. With that, let us get into the details of unsteady flow. The to understand this, we are going to start at a very familiar place, which is we are going to consider a fluid in a circular tube that is initially at rest. And then at time t equals 0, the fluid is set in motion by an axial pressure gradient. There is a pressure gradient that is imposed, the delta p over a certain length, and that pressure gradient begins the flow pressure drop begins the flow, L is the tube length and from the time the pressure gradient is applied to the time the steady state is achieved. The steady state is what the properties at a particular point or in this case the velocity at a particular point in the flow does not change with time. That will happen, that will happen over a certain after a certain distance, after a certain time and so on. But uh, we are interested in the part or at the time in the initial time from the point where the pressure gradient is applied, this flow starts moving to the time when the steady state is achieved. Okay. The velocity profile across the cross section of the tube at a certain location on the length of the tube will vary. That is what we are looking at. At that location, let us study the time dependent or the unsteady state variation of the velocity profile. If you look at a particular radius, a particular cross section that is, as soon as the fluid is set into motion, the velocity profile would be very, very different and we are trying to predict how that velocity profile would be, the unsteady velocity profile. After a certain while, uh, in uh, with, if you do not consider the entrance and exit lengths, then after a while, the in a majority of the pipe length, it is going to be a steady state. So, we are interested in the intervening time. Let us implicitly assume that the flow will be in cylindrical layers in the tube at any time. This assumption we are making, uh, some of these assumptions through intuition we will make uh, or has been made, have been made and they have been found to work. Okay? In, in other words, those assumptions are not bad assumptions. 
So here we are going to implicitly assume that the flow will be in cylindrical layers. It is always in laminar flow. Okay. It is always in layers. Only thing is that it is not uh, a flow that will give you a, a parabolic velocity profile when it is in steady state. That is the only situation here. We are not considering the intermixing of layers and so on and so forth. So, if this is the case, then we can take equation C2. Okay, it is still laminar flow. So, we can take C2. It is still flow in layers. So, we can take C2. And uh, C2 gives you the z component of equation uh, in the cylindrical coordinates. And that is this equation. If we cancel out the terms, the first term which we were cancelling uh, pretty much till now cannot be cancelled because vz the velocity in the z direction, this is the z direction let us say, varies with time. Okay. So, this term remains. There is no radial velocity, therefore, this term goes to 0. There is no tangential velocity, therefore, this term goes to 0. There is of course, a vz and vz varies with z. Okay. So, this term remains you have a dp dz, let this remain. You have a vz variation with r, yeah, that is very much there, that will remain. vz is not a function of theta, so this goes. vz is a function of z, so this remains plus rho gz. Okay. So, what remain are rho dou vz dou t plus vz dou vz dou z equals minus dou p minus rho g z, okay, I am taking this along with this, p minus rho g z by rho, rho, rho g z dou z. If you do this, you will get this minus rho p dou z uh, plus, it is a minus minus or plus rho g z is what you get. So, that is what this is. The other term re terms remaining are plus mu by r dou dou r r dou v z dou r and of course, this term is mu times dou, v z, dou squared v z dou z squared. So, this is what we have as the governing equation for unsteady state flow when the fluid starts moving in a cylindrical pipe, horizontal pipe. This is a very complex equation to solve if you recall from uh, your math differential equations course. It is a partial differential equation and <laughs> this is going to be difficult. Okay. So, what is normally done is with some insight some assumptions are made and of course, those assumptions are tested. Okay. We are going to see whatever assumptions have been made and found as good assumptions. Okay. So, this is the first time we are looking at this and this has already been done so many times, uh, been probably a long time ago. And so, we are going to use that knowledge and we are going to look at that knowledge here. So, the some of the suitable assumptions are, are to get an analytical solution is v z is not a function of z. Okay. People made this assumption and found this to be reasonable. In other words, v z does not depend on the length, does not depend on the distance along the flow axis. That is an assumption by the way. Okay. This, this is the basic equation. If you can find some means to solve it, go ahead. But this is difficult and therefore, even with these assumptions, it is quite lengthy, quite tedious. But let us do this. V z equals is, is not a function of z. Therefore, all those V z, d V z, t z will drop out. This is going to drop out, this is going to drop out. Of course, the others we cannot do much about. Okay. So, if you do that, uh, okay, some explanation of this that is at a particular time, the axial velocity at a particular radial, vari radial position is not assumed to vary with the length of the tube. And this may not be a bad assumption or this has been found to be a decent assumption. That is why we are doing this. And making suitable assumptions and approximations um, is essential in engineering practice and is mostly an art. Okay. We do not expect uh, people being exposed to this for the first time like you in this course to be able to do this. This comes with a lot of experience in the field and a lot of insights and so on. With this approximation, the equation becomes this, those dou v z dou z terms cancelled out. Rho dou v z dou t equals minus dou dou z of p minus rho g z plus mu by r dou dou r r dou v z dou r. 
equation 3.5 dash 1. And the initial condition to see how we are doing in terms of time and in terms of tedium. I think we will do this in two different classes that might be better. At t equals 0, this is the initial condition v z equals 0 that we know. And we need two boundary conditions second order here. So, two boundary conditions that give us space relationships. Therefore, at r equals 0, v z is finite or dou v z dou r equals 0. Okay, this, is, this is a standard boundary condition now. So, uh, there, there has to be radial symmetry. Therefore, whichever r you traverse by, you need to get to the same situation at the center. And that is possible mathematically only if there is a minima or a maxima at the center of velocity in this case, v z in this case. And uh, therefore, if uh, there is a minima or a maxima, the derivative uh, with respect to radius has to be 0 at the center point. Therefore, r equals 0, v, this is another way of saying that v z has to be finite or uh, physically relevant and that will happen only if this maxima or a minima condition is met dou v z dou r equals 0. And at r equals r, v z equals 0, that is at the wall, the wall of the tube, the wall is stationary, the layer closes to it, clings to it and therefore has to be stationary, no slip boundary condition. Also recall that p does not vary with time once the flow begins or with r, this we have already seen. Okay. The pressure uh, does not vary with uh, time once the flow begins, there is no, no reason for it to vary. And across the uh, certain cross section, we have found that to be a constant earlier. That was for steady state flow, we are trying to use that insight here and uh, that seems to be valid here, that is what has been found. So, all these assumptions have actually turned out to be good assumptions. Therefore, p minus rho g z which is capital P is a function of z alone which is this and therefore, this partial can be expressed as a total. Partial derivative dou p dou z can be replaced with the total derivative. Total derivatives uh, in ordinary differential equation that contain total derivatives are much easier to solve compared to partial differential equations. Therefore, dp dz is a constant and that can be replaced with delta p by l and uh, delta p is p l minus p 0, p l minus p 0 and therefore, equation can be written as this is must be 3, 3.5.1 can be written as rho dou v dou v z dou t, we still have that equals minus delta p by l, this we can, this derivative we have gotten rid of plus mu by r dou dou r r dou v z dou r, ok, good. We will call this equation 3.5 dash 2 and let us use dimensionless variables which will give us a general enough solution and uh, to do that let us define the following dimensionless variables. Let us define a phi as v z by minus delta p r squared by 4 mu l which is the ratio of the two velocities v z to v z max. Okay. Let us call that phi 3.5 dash 3 and let us say a xi is r by r. 3.5 dash 4 equation number and let us define a tau as nu t by r squared. Nu is viscosity by density. So, nu kinematic viscosity as it is called nu t by r squared equation 3.5 dash 5. Yeah, nu equals mu by rho the kinematic viscosity. From the above, V z is nothing but minus delta p by r squared by 4 mu l times phi. I am just recasting this here because I need to replace uh, all the v z and r's and t's in the original equation with non-dimensional numbers and not I am non-dimensionalizing uh, or I am writing the differential equation in terms of these non-dimensional numbers. Okay. So, v z in terms of phi is this from this equation, r is nothing but xi times capital R and t is nothing but r squared tau by nu. Okay. So, we, if we put these into the equation, we get dou v z dou t uh, equals minus delta p by 4 mu l r squared nu by r squared dou phi dou, dou tau. Okay. 
so if we uh, the rho do v z do t which is on the left hand side that is what we have replaced and that is what we are trying to replace in terms of the non dimensional numbers if you simplify the expression you will end up with minus delta p by 4 l d phi d tau i'm sorry do phi do tau okay so now we have all the terms of the equation in terms of the non dimensional numbers let's just plug them back in and also this of course yeah we, we still have this do v z do r so, dou v z dou r in terms of the non dimensional numbers or r dou v z dou r which appears is nothing but r is xi capital R dou v z was minus delta p r squared phi by 4 mu l dou r is dou xi r that will turn out to be xi r you differentiate this with respect to r uh, dou xi r r is a constant so you take that out um, so xi r of this dou phi okay uh, minus delta p r squared by 4 mu l uh, is a constant therefore that comes out of the derivative and you are left with dou xi and r comes out of this you are left, left with dou xi dou phi and dou xi and therefore this simplifies to xi minus delta p r squared by 4 mu l dou phi by dou xi okay that is what this term is. I think now we have all the terms and we substitute them you get mu by r dou dou r r dou v z dou r which is the term on the left hand side equals this which simplifies to this which simplifies finally to I am just showing you all the steps that is all minus delta p mathematical steps minus delta p by 4 l 1 by xi dou dou xi xi dou phi dou xi that is what your left hand side turns out to be ok let us see this equation. this is your left hand side rho dou v dou v z dou t this of course we have converted to de minus delta p by l and here we had uh, r you have a r you have a dou v z dou r all those we are substituting in terms of non dimensional numbers to non dimensionalize the equation. So, we are going term by term we have taken care of uh, one term and finally this is the equation in terms of the non dimensional variables the same and of course along with reasonable assumptions as, as uh, was later found uh, after they checked the assumptions and so on I suppose minus delta p by 4 l d dou, dou phi dou tau equals minus delta p by l plus minus delta p by 4 l 1 by xi dou dou xi of xi dou phi dou xi this is the equation governing equation in terms of the non dimensional variables and of course we need um, which can be simplified as dou phi dou tau equals 4 plus 1 by xi dou dou xi xi dou phi dou xi equation 3.5 dash 6 and the initial condition in terms of the non dimensional variables is that you can work this out go go and substitute the same variables back into them in terms of the non dimensional variables and see what you get you will get at tau equals 0 phi equals 0 and the boundary conditions are at xi equals 0 phi equals finite or do phi do xi equals 0 and at xi equals 1 phi equals 0. Okay. Now I think we have been at this for some time it is uh, it is a tedious process so let us do it in bits and pieces uh, which are manageable. Let us stop this lecture here and then when we come back I will continue with the solution for um, the unsteady state flow. See you.